Hey, you made it. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you taking a couple of minutes of your day to hang out with me and listen to what my dumb face has to say. So in my last video, we took a look at kind of what I've got running in my home lab back here. And we took a look at the hardware briefly and then kind of talked about uh, the two Proxmox servers that I've got for production and then the one that I've got for testing and development not development, I don't develop, but like testing and, and and tutorials, that sort of thing. I guess that's the better way to word that. So in that video, I, I talked about all of that, right? And that video is doing remarkably well. I wanna thank everybody who has watched that for checking it out. I really do appreciate it. It really does help me out a lot. Also gives me more motivation to create more videos like this. So uh, thank you for, for, for watching, for the comments, for the likes, the shares, all of that really does mean a lot to me. So in the comment section of the last video I released about all of this stuff, uh, a couple of people or a few people asked kind of what was my rationale in deploying um, LXCs or Linux containers for each of my individual services rather than throwing up a couple of VMs, installing Docker, and then putting all of my services in those couple of VMs. And I think that's a great question. Um, and I've got some rationale that I would like to, to, to kind of put out there for you guys, um, not necessarily to change your minds, but if I do, uh, Cool, if not, and you wanna keep doing things the way you've been doing it, that is perfectly acceptable. One of the things that I really dig about home labs and, and this kind of hobby and this kind of thing is that there isn't really one right way to do things across the board. Like the, the, the way that I do things may not be right for you and the way you do things may not be right for me. And I love that we can all kind of do things differently and share our ideas and and maybe maybe learn something new when we're doing that. So, so again, the question was, why didn't I just put up a couple of VMs, install Docker, and put all of my services in that rather than deploying an LXC for each of my different services. So let's talk about that for a couple of minutes. So there are actually a couple of reasons why I use LXCs for my individual services rather than uh, full-on VMs. Um, and, and I'm gonna talk about a couple of those reasons, but the first reason um, is, is basically a data backup, data uh, protection, and data recovery. Um, I said, well, let's just go to my desktop. It'll make more sense, right? So here we are, we're, at, we're on my desktop and um, you know this is ProxProd2 and I've got an LXC for AdGuard and I've got an LXC for my password manager and I've got an LXC for my speed test and my analytics and that sort of thing. Now I've got this VM down here, that's for active pieces. That is a standalone service that actually required uh, more than just an LXC for this. Uh, so I spun up an Ubuntu server uh, uh, VM and, and deployed it there. And that's why that one is not a VM um, because it required it is basically the, the long and the short of that. So let's say something goes wrong with, uh, with my ad guard, right? Uh, let's say it crashes, it gets corrupted, an update fails, something goes wrong and I need to, to bring it back online. Well, the easy way for me to do that is to then come over here to this backup right here, uh, come over to my backup server, um, and then I can pick uh, basically any in any day over the last month that I want to restore to and I can you know I can just click here and I can click restore and it will restore back to April 17th now the reason I I, I bring this up is because if for whatever reason, I had to restore an entire virtual machine full of docker containers back to a specific date all of the containers in that virtual machine get restored back to that date right so, so if I come over here, let's let's look at my demo server, right? And it, just, it might make more sense this way, right? So I've got all of these different uh, LXCs up here. None of these are being backed up. I don't need them to be. This is just for testing purposes. But I do have this Ubuntu server uh, VM down here that's almost maxed out. But but you know if I come into here, um, there I am. I'm, I'm logged in. Um, you know I can do a Docker PS. Oops. Uh, sudo uh, Docker PS. I just sudo I guess. Right, and here we can see, uh, let's move that down up the screen a little bit. Okay, so here we can see that I've got Wallace, I've got a Sterling PDF, I've got Hasty Paste, uh, I've got an Alpine uh, Redis container, or a Redis Alpine container, rather, uh, for for something, I don't remember what, I just threw all of this up, uh, just just for the sake of, of this this rationale video. Of course, I've got Portainer there. Um, I'm, I actually wanna talk about Portainer in another video. They're doing some weird stuff, I think. Uh, nothing bad, I wanna clarify, I, I'm not trying to throw shade. I just, I noticed something weird this morning with this instance of Portainer. Okay, so all of these containers that I've got, you know, here and here and here, uh, all of those are running inside this VM, right? So let's say, 
for whatever reason, let's say Wallace, it's not set up yet, but let's say that Wallace uh, gets corrupted, backup fails, um, so something goes wrong, he gets hacked, whatever, right? And so I want to restore Wallace to a previous uh, to a previous known good state. Well, because it's inside of this VM, I can't restore this entire VM back to that last known good state without affecting Sterling PDF and Hasty Paste. Also restoring those back to that previous known good date for Wallace. Does that make sense? So basically what it boils down to is that I want uh, each of my services to run in its own LXC for a couple of reasons. One, I want all of my containers to be isolated from each other so that if, if one of them is compromised, it will be harder, not impossible, but harder for, for the bad actor, the bad guy, the hacker, the whatever, to then uh, infiltrate and, and compromise my other services. Uh, I hadn't mentioned that yet, but that is one of those things, is keeping them each individually isolated adds another layer of protection. Um, and of course, the other reason is, is not only isolation for security purposes, but isolation of individual data sets for their databases, for, their, for all of the storage that each individual uh, service needs if I need to back, or if I need to restore one of those services back to a previously known good date, I don't wanna lose data on my other services on that VM. So I went ahead and just put each of my services in their own LXC, with the one exception of the VM as a just, just because it needed it, but, but all of my services run in LXCs so that they're each isolated from each other um, as far as where they're running, but also their data is separate from each other. So if I have to restore, then I can just restore that one application and not have to basically lose uh, data from other applications by restoring back to a previous date. Um, so hopefully that helps kind of explain what my rationale is there, why I did what I did. Um, there, there's also other little things like, and I've got notes here um, that I took uh, because my memory sucks. Um, basically, uh, I'm just gonna read this. It says, LXCs share the host system's kernel, making them much faster to start, and they use fewer resources than virtual machines. So basically, each uh, LXC, each Linux container, uh, shares the, the Proxmox kernel um, and doesn't load its own kernel on top of the, the Proxmox kernel, right? So you're, so you're reducing necessary resources to spin up those services by putting them in an LXC versus a VM. And I, and I know that there's, somebody, and you're, you're probably right, uh, having all of those LXCs is probably the same uh, resource usage as a single VM. Um, but again, my argument is mostly the separation of each individual container uh, for security purposes, and then also the data backup and recovery. Um, and of course, the, the, there, there are some cons to doing it this way. I've got those notes here as well, right? Um, they, uh, LXCs uh, provide some isolation, but since they share the kernel, there is a security issue in one container could possibly impact others if they manage to hit the kernel, right? So, so, so my, my, my logic isn't, isn't foolproof, but uh, there, there's some logic there in, 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 my own, in my own monkey brain, right? So I hope that kind of helps make sense of the rationale that I've got in my setup and why I went with LXCs uh, for each individual service rather than a single VM or even a couple of VMs for multiple services. Um, just, it's how my monkey brain works. Um, and I wanted to, to just kind of explain that to you guys. And of course, if you've got um, ideas on why I'm wrong or ideas why I'm right, definitely leave that in the comment section down below. Uh, if you're interested in this kind of content where I talk about home lab stuff and the rationale about why I do certain things and when I cover Docker containers, we're just just kind of all over the place here, but if you're interested in my content, definitely don't forget to get subscribed. Uh, if you want to support the channel, of course, you can become a channel member or become a patron. Uh, neither of those are required, but if you do either of those things, you will get access to my content with no ads in it at all. So that's something to take into consideration if you're interested in supporting the channel besides a subscribe and a like. So uh, I want to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, I know you guys have got other things to get done today, um, but, but thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and uh, I'll talk to you in the next video.